Hello, good evening and welcome to you. It's Taya Van Dort, the executive producer of Time of the Sixth Sun. In the window below me is Nikki Luna, the, the writer, director, producer of this amazing series. And in, the other, in our other window, from 9 a.m. in the morning in Hawaii, we have Jeffrey and Linda Benyahoppi. Good to have you with us. Good morning. Aloha. Good to be with you. Good to be with you. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. There's a lot of excitement for this because, um, well, Jeffrey, we the feedback we get about you know your incredible voice and the dulcet tones of, of Tobias that you channeled when you uh, when you met Luna and that tells the story and the narrative behind Time of the Sixth Sun. Um, and uh, you very kindly recorded that beautiful copyright warning at the beginning of the uh, of the um, CDs that we put out as well, asking people not to uh, not to nick the content, which is a very British term. And uh, it's just so great to have you with us. And um, thank you for agreeing to be with us uh, tonight. Thank you. And, and Linda and I always appreciate the work you've done on Time of the Sixth Sun. It's uh, it's an amazing uh, presentation, a beautiful movie. And it just uh, it's uh, the words. Are, it's lush. It's sacred. It's Awesome. I don't know if you guys can hear outside, there's lots of clapping going on and it's because in the UK, our national treasure is the NHS. So everyone at, on a Thursday at eight o'clock, everyone comes out in the streets and claps the doctors and the nurses and oh, wow. they're all out there clapping now. <laughs> That's so you know, back home uh, in Colorado, uh, where, where, of course, we're not there right now, but what they're doing now at seven o'clock at night is uh, howling because we live up in the mountains, you know, with the wildlife. So everybody leans out their window and howls. <laughs> I love the and the whole mountain erupts in howling. <laughs> so while we're waiting still for people to come in, um, uh, you guys are streaming from your place in Hawaii, is that correct? Yes. Uh -huh. We're at the Villa Amio in Hawaii, and we've the been here island. on the big island. We've been here for since uh, early February, and it, it's uh, it's a great place to be under the circumstances, you know, being yeah. kind of sequestered, and uh, it's beautiful property. The weather is very nice, so we're not lush. we're not complaining. Lush no. with life, yeah. Yeah, everything grows here so lush. Yeah. So unfortunately, we had to cancel our workshops. Uh, which, but that was tough. We, that was hard. Uh, and uh, a lot of people actually had already arrived on the island from Europe and other places, and we just we unfortunately had to cancel. But uh, I think I think there is a lot more to all this than what meets the eye. Yeah, maybe Adamus might fill us in on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Us mere mortals. <laughs> yes. What do we know? So, so shall we? Shall we just start at the very beginning? Because we, you know, our our Facebook group has grown from sort of nothing in October to twenty seven thousand people yesterday, and wow. uh, so a huge proportion of those will have seen the movie, but some of them won't. So, should we just before we get into the sort of the the, the meat of the of the webinar, should we just do a little bit of a, an introduction, Nikki, about how you met uh, Jeffrey and Linda, and 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 what what the relationship is? Yeah, gosh, I I had already I'm, I'd met um, the two of you at a previous conference, and I heard that Tobias was in his final few weeks of channeling with you, yep. uh, channeling through you, and so mm -hmm. uh, I kind of just rocked up. No, I did ask first, <laughs> mm -hmm. and um, I asked. Uh, and Jeffrey went into that trance space, and Tobias came through. And um, I just explained that we had this film and these speakers and these topics. And would you please tell our story for us? And uh, he was very obliging. And we turned on the cameras and microphones. And I think we spent a couple of days. But it was a very moving time to spend with you. And I'd rather you explain that rather than I, of why you're not channeling Tobias anymore. But he was very close to you, almost 24 hours a day, the two of you. And we took a lovely walk in the mountains. And uh, it was, it, it, it felt bittersweet, sad and lovely to be around him. It was. Uh, I, I, I didn't come from the spiritual background, neither Linda and I did. And Tobias just showed up one day, started talking to me, uh, taking me through kind of a um, spiritual boot camp, you know, basic training. And after about a year, I finally told Linda about it. Uh, and that kind of, then it, one thing after the other just started happening. And pretty soon I was channeling Tobias to groups and we started Criminal Circle. And 
Uh, we loved Tobias. I mean, a lot. He, he was very grandfatherly, very warm and gentle. Supportive. Yeah, and um, yeah, very nurturing. And then after 10 years, he announced that he was leaving to come back to Earth to reincarnate uh, even as an ascended master, but he wanted to be back here on Earth at this time, but also to do something that he had never done in his uh, previous lifetimes, is to enjoy life. Uh, in his lifetime as Tobias, which was about 500 BC, uh, he was uh, he was a very devout Jew and followed all of God's rules, which were really man's rules, and uh, never really, really enjoyed life. So he came back literally to enjoy life. Uh, he's right now about, well, I guess, 21 years old. And I know the timing sounds weird, but he came, he incarnated into a 10-year-old, what he called a shell body. Uh, not a walk-in, but it was a, he kind of didn't want to go through the whole birthing process. So his, um, they call him Sam, and he's about 21 years old right now. I haven't heard anything about Sam lately, you know, the past six or eight months, but hoping to pretty soon. But I was um, with you guys in uh, Slovenia in Bled yes. uh, at a conference, the Masters Conference, and uh, Sam came through. I think it's yes. the first channel he's ever done on stage, and, and, and even for you guys. And yeah. I think, you know, one of the first things he talked about was the film, which was took me aback, I have to say. <laughs> so in, in this body, he is consciously aware of this film and, well, everything. Yeah. Yeah, so um, you know that that was uh, that was amazing uh, because that was the first time he did or I did channel Sam uh, in in this time, and it was it was very heartfelt, very teary. And uh, even when Tobias left, he left. That was it. Uh, I've channeled him, I believe, once or twice on very special occasions. But he didn't want to keep that old connection. He because when he left, then uh, Adama Saint Germain moved in. And he wanted me to really focus on Adamus and not try to hold on to the past with Tobias. And uh, Adamus was pretty different, don't you think? I would say extremely different, <laughs> very different. And uh, young yeah. energy, very young. Yeah. Direct, uh, di so direct. direct. Uh, and, you know, the hard part was a lot of people that had been with us during the Tobias era uh, and loved that, uh, that gentleness of Tobias. And I channeled with my eyes closed and sitting in a chair. It was very comfortable. And Adamus came in and shook everything up. He said, open your eyes. We're going to walk around. No getting sleepy here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, he can be very um, provocative, very brash. Uh, Direct. But also extremely loving and wise. But okay. he, you know, he, he doesn't suffer fools. No. <laughs> at all. And uh, he's got he's got one thing with the Crimson Circle. He's not interested in um, a lot of other people. Uh, you know, it's not about building the group or anything, but he's got one thing. He said his whole intent is to stay here, and work with us, with people who are choosing their embodied realization. So he's not dealing with uh, more of the, what you call a general spiritual audience or uh, he, he really is here only for those who are choosing their embodied realization. And he's at times like a, like a drill sergeant. I mean, he's, he's tough. Uh, he can be funny, but he's not really that funny. Uh, and, uh, he can be very, he likes to distract to get us out of our minds and then, you know, jump right in to get us back on track uh, with our embodied realization. So it was, it's been quite a journey. I mean, it's been incredible. And, um, we we were traveling the world. We were doing about 175,000 kilometers uh, per year, and we we finally backed off of that. And there's a burnout factor. Yeah, we're, we're still traveling to Europe a couple times a year, but um, we're spending more time here in Hawaii and time, of course, at our studio in Colorado. So, Linda, I'd like to ask you because you're always present in, in, during the channelings, and to to tell us, you know, it's a really important role that you hold. Do you want to explain what happens and for uh, you? Nobody's really actually asked me that directly. You know, when it, it's about the safe space more than anything, that when we sit down to do this work, Jeff fully allows and opens himself up in every way. 
And so I believe that my my role is to support the safe space. Support the safe space. Anyone are knocking over my coffee cup here. <laughs> I need that coffee. It's till nine in the morning here. <laughs> And there are times when, uh, and it's kind of funny because I, I do have my own conversations with dumbest people on the planet. And, and Jeff, a parent, you know, tells me, uh, you know, he does hear all that. And, um, but it's, it's a, for me, it's about uh, supporting the safe space for everyone that listens. Be, you know, again, a dumbest can be strong. People really open up and we just want everybody to feel safe more than anything. And are you, in a way, anchoring the energy as well, holding the energy as it comes in? I believe so. Yeah, yeah. yeah she does. Yeah. And it makes me feel safe because then I know with Linda here, I can really go way, way, way out there. And if I get lost, she'll pull me back in. Hmm. And you know that she's not going to give you Coca-Cola to drink, but a fine glass of red wine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's you, have to explain, you have to quantify that now. Adamus wants red wine once in a while, and Jeff's like, I can't drink and channel. And so I have to deal with, well, who's the decider here? Because it gets a little complicated. Yep. <laughs> and also, Tobias loved drinking Coca Cola, and uh, Adamus always seems quite scathing of that. Yeah, he calls it swill. Yeah, you know, swill. Yeah. Uh, but he does like coffee, which is good because uh, that, that, that we both agree on. <laughs> Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So um, what did I want to ask you first? We've got, um, um, actually one thing I wanted to ask you, Linda, still, just while we were, were on the subject of Tobias, it must have felt sometimes like there were three of you in the marriage. <laughs> there are too many stories about that, um, and I won't go into all that, but, you know, once Jeff, the, over time, there's always somebody else with us, always. It, it's never just Jeff and Linda, hardly. And, uh, you know, and at night, I mean, a lot of times Adamus is the worst. I mean, he's got Jeff going in the middle of the night and his arms going and, you know, kind of pattering. So I had to really be willing to share in ways I never quite imagined. And, and the other thing that's kind of fun for me that to have been in it all these years was Adamus uh, and Tobias were different than that. Tobias was all about, he, he distilled it down to loving yourself. And Adamus is all about trusting yourself. And the more time goes on, the more important I realize that is for me and probably everyone else, that as crazy as things are, you have to be able to find that place of trust. Yeah. So if we bring this to current time, I think the first question that uh, personally I want to ask is, and it's on everyone's minds now, obviously, coronavirus. And um, if people have been to your site or on YouTube, we posted a video of it. In 2014, Adamus predicted that there was going to be a global virus that would kill many people. Um, and then in February, he started to speak about the consciousness of the virus. Do you want to tell us a little bit about what he said about it earlier on this year? Yes. Uh, yeah. Th thank you. Uh, yeah, it was back in 2014. He does a, an annual kind of a planetary trend thing, not predictions, but where the planet yeah. is going. And uh, he, otherwise, he really doesn't talk about what's going on on the planet because he's just interested in working with the, uh, us as individuals going into our realization. But so back then he said that there would be a virus that came to the earth and they really wouldn't be able to figure out how to uh, manage it, how to handle it. And of course, we're finding that out right now. Uh, but I want to throw in a note, too, about two years ago, sitting here in Hawaii on the Lanai one night, he popped in and said, uh, he said, in about two years, um, there's going to be some really rough stuff happening on the planet. Of course, he didn't tell me what it was, but he said just be prepared and he said get crimson circle prepared uh as an organization with all of your systems all your uh your staff and everything because not only to endure all this but also he said you're gonna have a lot of new people coming in uh after that so we've done that uh when he talked in february uh, he this the, the coronavirus was just coming about and actually we it was uh mid-february we had a group here from south korea and that was uh, shortly after China, that was the next place that got affected. 
they were worried. We didn't know much any much about it, and to me, it wasn't a big concern at the time. But um, anyway, he started out the workshop for the Koreans, talking about coronavirus, and said, at the core of anything, of course, it's energy at the core of anything. Uh, and he said, even with a virus, whether it's biological or it's, uh, there, there are also mental viruses. Uh, and he said, at the core, you have to take a look at the energy. What is it trying to do? Uh, and what's the purpose? And he said, this one with the coronavirus ultimately is an economic virus. There's an uh, imbalance in economics on the planet. It's time for a change of a banking system that's 500 years old. Not, not that it's awful, but it's just time for a change. And he said that this virus will affect the uh, economy more than anything. And uh, certainly there's been a lot of deaths, unfortunately. And with the long-term effects uh, with the economy, uh, rebalancing of things. Uh, it, it's very sad to see people mm -hmm. out of the jobs, you know, particularly uh, the restaurant workers and the, uh, service workers and so many people. It, it's, but, so anyway, that was his take on it. It's, it's about the economy. Okay. The few have many and the many have few, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it's gotten to be more so in recent years, particularly with technology, the way it is. Uh, it's kind of an old Atlantean thing where a few in Atlantis had the technology and the basically the access to um, the, the power and a lot didn't. And I think when we come through all this, it's going to really balance things out beautifully in a way it's going to cause some big shifts it's just tough going through it we're kind of already seeing it in a way aren't we just even people re-evaluating you know the porters in the hospitals doctors nurses the people are stacking shelves in the supermarkets so we've got food yeah. tomorrow those people that society's kind of looked down on and yeah. people are going wow these guys are you know let's give them a clap oh yeah when we go out get our supplies that we make sure to thank those people they're they're yeah. amazing mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. they really are yeah and linda's got a halo about her uh she's all lit up there's happens to be a light up above which i didn't take into account when we thought about the time for this but you look angelic linda i was gonna say it's a, it's a good look <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 like once in a lifetime <laughs> yeah, making somebody out there do a screen capture of this yeah. to linda. It's, it's beautiful <laughs> So, Linda, because um, you're always there firsthand, do you, do you remember everything that um, Adama says, Jeff? You're not in trance like with Tobias. You are aware and you remember afterwards. Is that correct? Uh, yeah. I, I'm very conscious during the channeling. Uh, I know what's going on because he has me walking around and uh, yeah. he's, he's talking individually to people as he walks around and that is so weird because it's like seeing right into them kind of uh seeing their past lives seeing the their issues and not not in a uh, snoopy kind of way but it's very intense and afterwards uh i tend to really forget about it and fortunately linda reminds me or uh gene tinder our content manager uh or keeps track of everything but uh, no i actually really don't so then my question's for Linda. So when Adamus, he also said about this virus, that there's nothing to fear when you allow all energy to serve you. What do you think he meant by that? You know, in other words, if you, it, it's about yourself again and trusting yourself. And that's where, that's what he's, I believe he's referring to. And that when you trust yourself and allow your energy, literally, that is you and that's your sovereignty. And that's, that's the place that, that's the place to be. It's the safest place to be. And it doesn't mean you hide or you have to do anything. It's about sensing and allowing that sovereignty is what I believe he means. Yeah. And also, Jeffrey, Adama said that uh, it would be technology that can ultimately help to rebalance this situation. Do you want to explain that? I'm not sure exactly what he means by that, uh, other than uh, I know right now there's uh, over 2 million doctors and scientists on the planet who are all focused on trying to find a solution. And it's probably the biggest um, effort in, in the history of mankind. Collaboration, yeah. Uh, collaboration to find a solution. Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. And it's also interesting at our, we do a monthly webcast uh, that um, with Adamus does a, a channel every month. We, we It's first Saturday of every month at the webcast at the beginning of March, I think it was February, maybe um, I lose track, <laughs> but uh, he, he told the listeners, the viewers uh, that he said, don't make any big decisions in your life for six months. I believe that was at the, February uh, channel. And it was kind of weird. I thought, well, I wonder what that means and why six months, why no big decisions. But he's very clear about it. Don't make any big life changing decisions for six months. Then once the whole coronavirus thing came about, I realized, oh, that's kind of him telling us this is going to be a six month deal. And not that it's all going to be cleared up, but we've got six months of um, readjusting to do. Mm. Six months of sunbathing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or, or not taking showers, not getting haircuts, you know. <laughs> but, you know, there, there's a simplicity to it that I'm not a real Pollyanna kind of person. I'm not always like, oh, I'm goody, goody. But I, I, when I stand back and look at this and I'm thinking, when you think of all the craziness in the world, the, yeah. the having to see the world stop a little bit, and let people take pause for themselves and be reflective and really have the time to stop from that everyday thing you always do. More people doing that than ever. Isn't there a lot of potential in that? And then and then I had to say, wait a minute. And and would I prefer that we the world have potential to endure something like this versus a war, some sort of physical war? I'm gonna to try to see the best of this. Not that it's good but I'm trying to see the best of this for the potential. Absolutely. And people that actually, Sorry, Taya. No, I think, I think that's right. And actually I had a conversation with my, with my mom today and she's, she's on her own and she's, you know, she is isolated. And so um, my father is in spirit and, and she said, you know, what, what actually makes this more tolerable is the fact that it's not just me going through it. The fact that it is, you know, I'm not sitting here thinking, this is just me, you know, stuck at home on my own. There are plenty of people all around the world doing exactly the same thing at exactly the same time. And it is giving that time for internal reflection and for stillness. Yeah. And and for some people, it's probably the first time in their lives. We were also discussing about how, how people's work lives will probably change because, you know, how many hours do people waste commuting backwards yeah. and forwards every single day? And now they've proven that they can potentially work from home. It's going to be very difficult for big corporate employers to go, no, you've got to be in the office five days a week doing that daily grind and that daily commute. It's like, oh, how come I was able to work from home when we had the virus? I think it's going to change on so many different levels we're not even aware of yet. A lot of potential. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Well, I've got some other questions. And uh, whether Adamus feels at any time that he wants to come in, let us know if he does, because... He's, he's ready. Uh, he's, <laughs> he's kind of showed up. He showed up. On, he showed up. That was Adamus <laughs> coming. In. No, he's he's ready. Uh, but if you have a couple more, Nikki, uh, go ahead. Yeah. So, um, well, from your perspective, we can also ask Adamus when he comes through. But I was going to ask: um, Is there a particular reason as to which co countries were hit first? So w there's this sort of three D story mm -hmm. of Wuhan and the market and blah, 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 and 5G and all of those things. But um, in there was China and Korea, and then it came to Italy. I just wondered if you have a sense if there's any rhyme or reason to where it hit, or if that is a connection with the Vatican, as you were saying about the economics. It's kind of going a little bit conspiracy theorish, but I just wanted your views. I, I would almost rather let Adamus answer that because I'd like to hear his answer. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I don't have a good answer of my own, but I'd like to see what he has to say about that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, one you could answer is um, what's the importance of conscious films like Time of the Sixth Sun, especially at a time where there's so much negative, negative media? Oh, it, it's huge uh, and you know having like your film and there's some others out there that that are in the works or just out uh, but it, you know to me it gives people hope and it gives them uh, a, a different perspective uh, of, and not even just a spiritual perspective but a consciousness perspective of things I think it's so important and 
Uh, I think it's so important for people to support the kind of work you're doing because uh, the, the planet really needs it right now. Uh, there's all the other messages out there and it's kind of confusing, but with some really, really good consciousness films. Uh, and, you know, uh, I'm gonna just uh, divert for just a moment, but uh, Linda and I come from a, a background where we know what it takes to produce films and things like that. Uh, so I know it takes a tremendous amount of effort and a lot of money, uh, something most people may not realize. And I know you both committed your lives to this work and, and we all appreciate that. But I can't say enough about people supporting what you're doing, whether it's buying the film or just making a donation, just a small, you know, or large donation. But uh, it's what we need to do as our uh, consciousness community right now, no matter what group you're associated with. But to support the kind of work you're doing is so important, hugely important. Any contribution makes a difference, correct? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's cost us over seven hundred thousand pounds to yeah, yeah. create this movie over those years. So, yeah, you know what they say about uh, spiritual movies. Uh, you know how to make uh, a million dollars in a spiritual movie. Start yeah, out with start out with, start out with three million. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was going to be how many light bulbs joke. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. You know, you end up putting in more time and more money than you ever receive back. Uh, and, and I know it's a passion for both of you, but yeah. uh, we can only ask uh, all of your viewers to really support that. You know, even just a little bit from a lot of people goes a long way. Yeah. And you guys have been supporting another film, which I'm a huge fan of and can't wait to see it soon. Mm -hmm. Hopefully it's coming out called, uh, do you want to tell us about it? A Rude Awakening. Rude Awakening, yeah, that's, you know, it was going to premiere in Amsterdam on June 22nd, and we were going to go for the premiere, and of course, with the coronavirus issue, now that's canceled. They're actually going to premiere it at, uh, we have a big event in Bled, Slovenia, Again. in mid-September, where you were a speaker two years ago. Uh, they're going to do the premiere there, so it kind of, actually, for me, it kind of worked out nicely. They, they get to do it right in the, kind of the core of our big group. We've got about 500 people coming in for that and it'll be fun. Great. Fantastic. Well, I really admire you for supporting projects like that. And it's like you were saying, you know, whether it's a, a book you support or musicians or, you know, people, pioneers and visionaries building alternative communities, it's important we put our support to that. It's our Absolutely. tribe. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, Will Adamas. Yeah. Okay. No, I gotta, I gotta mention this to the viewers. This is kind of like our disclaimer at the front. Uh, uh, first of all, the Adamas is a facet of Saint Germain, uh, and I actually met Saint Germain even before Tobias. That's another story. But uh, most people are familiar with Saint Germain when he started. When he took over from Tobias at uh, the Crimson Circle he used the, the moniker uh, Adama St. Germain to separate or differentiate what he's done in the past with other channelers. Uh, the work is very specific to Crimson Circle. And, uh, you know, he says he kind of collects the group energy and that's kind of how he manifests this character, uh, Adama St. Germain. Uh, he's not for everybody and he doesn't want to be for everybody. He can be provocative. He can be challenging. challenging. <laughs> He's got one thing in mind, working with the people who truly are choosing embodied realization in this lifetime. Some people call it enlightenment. He uses the word realization. And then who are going to stay in the body. Uh, you know, that's, that's his main goal. He's not interested in just uh, general metaphysical new age stuff whatsoever. Um, as you've heard some of his uh, rants about it. I know Nikki, um, but uh, so he's really focused on that. And, and, you know, some people love him. Some people don't like him, uh, which is OK. He's not trying to win a popularity contest. He wouldn't. He couldn't if he wanted to. Uh, <laughs> but we found over the years he's just so supportive of those who are coming into realization and going to stay on the planet in their physical body. 
So I want to give that little disclaimer of some people, you know. No, you're right. He doesn't always say what you want to hear. No, he, he says doesn't. what you need to hear. Yeah. Can I, <laughs> can I just step in one time? Is there, uh, Taya, is there anything, um, any questions for Jeffrey before he goes to Adamus? Because it would probably be. Uh, there's a question from Elka in Holland says, um, we wonder whether this coronavirus really exists and whether and what is tested with the COVID-19 RT-PCR test. So I think what Elka is referring to is, are they testing for COVID-19 or are they testing for all of the coronaviruses that have been around for a long time? And which is why these stats are so much higher than they potentially are really, is a, is a theory behind it. I'm not making any judgment. Right, right. So um, let, let's wait for Adamus. And, yeah, I think that's an Adamus question, really. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And okay. uh, so if, if you're okay, the, we do the transition. Linda does a little breathing. It allows me to connect with uh, Adamus. I take off my jewelry, which is only a watch today. And um, when you'll know when Adamus is ready. And then we start. And you're going to ask questions. Is that correct? Yeah. Great, great. Okay. Okay. Good. Some from me, some from the audience. Taylor okay. will ask the audience ones. So, with that, I invite each of us to take that good, deep breath, that breath of consciousness and awareness. Take the good, deep breath and let the energies flow throughout your body, breathing in and breathing out deeply for you. Take the good deep breath and you can feel the energies of Damas here for us if you choose. Take the good deep breath and feel him if you choose. Adamus is here with every step, with every breath. Be with the good deep breath as we invite Adamus here for each of us. Breathe for you. I am that I am, Adamus of Sovereign Domain. I do appreciate and thank you for allowing me into this space. Uh, I always love a good interview and I love good uh, feisty questions from our listeners. And uh, um, oh, there's some other things going on here, which uh, I'll explain as we get into this. But let's begin with the questions. Okay, so first of all, Teo has a question for you, Adamas. Greetings. The question was, it, the, the questions are coming in so fast that questions have disappeared up the uh, thread. I'm looking for it. Um, the, the question was, uh, is coronavirus real? And does it really exist? And when it is tested, for COVID-19, um, what is actually tested with the test that we currently have on Earth? Indeed, uh, and uh, I'll answer that by saying it doesn't really matter. Uh, it doesn't really matter if there is a coronavirus disease or not. Uh, the fact is something happened, something triggered uh, in consciousness to cause people to believe in it, to cause them to react to it, and to cause much needed changes uh, in so many different things on the planet. It doesn't matter if it started uh, in, a, in a meat market in China. It doesn't matter if it was an accident uh, in a laboratory. It doesn't matter if uh, the aliens brought it here. Uh, none of that matters, actually. Uh, the, the testing for it, um, from what I see, is uh, not just for a general coronavirus, but it's specifically for this particular strain. But the problem is in the testing uh, that they're not really aware of yet is this particular strain of coronavirus mutates and changes itself so quickly that right when they think they have an understanding of its dynamics, its uh, energetic characteristics, uh, it will change on them. And that's going to be the biggest challenge going forward. Uh, things will get back to a little bit what you would call normal on the planet, but this is going to be around for a while. It's going to be a fact of life. Uh, so I go back to the thing. It doesn't matter if it's a conspiracy. It doesn't matter if it's very real. And let's not focus on this. Let's focus on what's happening to the planet. And for all of you who are listening to, to this, it's time to focus on why you're here in this lifetime. It's not an accident. You didn't come here 
just to have another lifetime. It's time to reflect deeply on it. Let go of uh, the what, what I would call the conspiracy theories, uh, whether it's this or anything else. Let go of uh, anyone else's teachings at this point. Come to yourself. Uh, why are you here? And what are you going to do with the rest of your life on this planet? So it's serving a beautiful purpose, no matter where it came from, you know, or even if it's real or not. Thank you. Thank you. So um, we humans seem to have a lot of conspiracy theories spinning our heads out. And uh, I always say that in every conspiracy theory, there's some truth because otherwise it wouldn't have any legs. But my question is, what's the motive behind these conspiracy theory energies, the energies? Mm -hmm. And how cool. do we discern what's true or not, Adamus? Oh, indeed. Uh, the what, what happens in a conspiracy theory is there is a huge distraction from the things that one, particularly one who's on this uh, path to realization, should be looking at. It's a huge distraction. And uh, like you say, it is based in some truth, but then that truth gets distorted and twisted and added on to and intensified. Then it becomes drama. Drama is a energy that people use, they feed on drama. It, it, drama make, whether it's from a conspiracy, whether it's simply like with family members, whatever it is, drama makes one feel like they're alive. And that's why people like going into drama, even if they claim they don't, they, they indeed like it because it reminds them they're alive. They're not uh, just sitting in the boredom of their everyday life. So that's the biggest thing with conspiracies. It, it, it builds drama. People love it. But uh, drama, in a way, is like a drug. When it wears off, then you go to even a lower uh, or, or emptier space than you were in before. So ultimately, uh, conspiracy theories are a mind's way of spinning, creating drama, making you feel like you're doing something. And the fact is, uh, I don't know any ascended master, and I do know all of the ascended masters, uh, know any ascended master who got to their enlightenment through drama or conspiracy, not one. But for those who are still into it, have fun with it, but just don't uh, come around us. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm just going to stay with that for a moment because you talk about it being a distraction. Yes. And we are all being bombarded right now and i hear what you say about drama but when we're hearing stories about underground channels uh, tunnels and abused children what do we do with that information how how close does that take us in our psyches is my question Yes, uh, and I'll have to quantify that by saying that the work that I'm doing with Shambra, with the Crimson Circle, is about their realization in this lifetime. We don't focus on other things, even though these are huge issues on the planet, like the environment, uh, like uh, the, the enslaved children or any enslaved people. Uh, we, we simply don't take these on. I, I'm looking for looking to guide, to assist uh, a group of people who are choosing their realization. They will become standards. And a standard is one who is in there realizing that all energy is theirs and the energy is there to serve them. For them to stay on this planet in the body, not preaching, not even necessarily teaching, but just being there for others. That light that emanates from uh, uh, an embodied master will change earth more than anything else at this point that light illuminates potential so potential for a, a cure to the coronavirus or to cancer or to economic situations that embodied master doesn't need to actually do much of anything other than just to be there as a matter of fact i've said that the true master in this age their their office is a park bench or a cafe well maybe not cafes right now but <laughs> where they're simply radiating their light onto the planet. And when they do, it's like filling a dark room with light. And then suddenly you see the potential. Scientists who uh, may not be religious, spiritual, metaphysical at all, suddenly have a big aha moment, a breakthrough in the technology. That's how consciousness works. It's like a, a light that illuminates 
what otherwise is hidden. And uh, so in answer to your question, I'm with uh, Chambre, with Crimson Circle, uh, we're, we don't uh, actively get into those things. Uh, there are many others on the planet right now who are the energy holders uh, who do get into those. And they're very real. They're very real uh, with, uh, uh, as you talked about the tunnels and with the uh, whole networks for uh, child uh, enslavement and so many other things. But I know this sounds a little bit um, cold, perhaps, or callous, but I'm more interested right now in uh, a few thousand humans who have come to their realization, uh, who are taking this time for to allow their realization. It's a very natural process. It's just about allowing it. Than I am with our group getting caught up in any of these other things. There are many, many other groups who will do it. So sure. uh, uh, I am absolutely committed to guiding those who are ready for their realization now. And in the past, the ascended masters who come into the realization have done a lot of suffering, been a very long and difficult um, path to uh, enlightenment. It doesn't need to be. It, it really doesn't need be and with the group I'm working with now they're learning to get over suffering they're learning to to not have abundance issues as strange as that seems but abundance issue is indicative of the fact that you don't trust yourself that you believe energy is outside of you and you're trying to get it from somewhere else and you're not letting it serve you so they're, they're simply these are the things I'm working with with the crimson circle and um I know there's many other things happening on the planet, but this is my focus. Yeah. So um, everyone feels that the end game is sort of vaccinations, but taking that thinking of what you've just been talking about forward, maybe it's about us being able to be masters of our own bodies to create an environment which instead of a vaccination, that will work against a virus. Is that the sort of thinking you're talking about, Adonis? Part of the issue with vaccinations is uh, when they develop a vaccination based on what they currently know about the coronavirus, the virus will mutate and then they'll need a new vaccination. And it's, uh, it's kind of like going down a rabbit trail at this point. It'll provide some temporary relief. It's more about a change of consciousness will eventually uh, what will happen with this, and I, I've been looking into it very carefully, what will eventually happen is it will just, as quickly as it appeared on the planet, it will disappear as quickly. And there'll be many, many theories about why it suddenly left. But the fact is that the light of consciousness was enough to, uh, to allow a rebalancing of many things on the planet, and there's no need for it anymore. Yeah. So I'd have to say that even though there's a tremendous surge in the uh in the science and the technology to understand it ultimately it's it's just going to it's just going to fade one day uh, surprising many people adamas there's a question there's so many questions coming in but uh, roccio has asked how could we use the opportunity of the pandemia to speed the awareness of consciousness what is your advice please uh, in a way it's very interesting uh i talked recently in one of our gatherings i called it a convergence many things converging at one time. It's unprecedented on this planet to have this many people at home, uh, not going out. I mean, the, the, it's, and who could have thought of such a scheme? Not, not even the best science fiction writer uh, wouldn't have b believed that this type of thing could happen. So many people are going within. Now, some will not be able to handle it very well. Uh, they, 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 they'll drive themselves or others crazy. And some would simply choose to leave the planet because they can, really cannot stand having to be by themselves, with themselves. So we have that convergence of people at home. At the same time, back in uh, towards the end of uh, last year, uh, this thing I call the Order of the Ark closed. It was the portal, the gateway uh, for the angelic beings to come to this planet. It's been in, in existence as long as the planet has been. And that was closed. It was literally the representatives of all the 144,000 angelic families. At the same time, uh, not so long ago, uh, April 4th, 
all entities in all of creation, other than those who were in human form, all entities were called back to their angelic families. And in this calling back, the announcement went out through all of creation that the angelic families were disbanding. There was no need for them anymore. So now look at all of these events happening at the same time, as well as Gaia leaving. Uh, it won't happen overnight, but all of these things are shifting and changing right now. It's perhaps the best opportunity that I've ever had, ever seen in all my lifetimes, and now as an ascended master, of making consciousness shifts within yourself. Don't do it in groups. Uh, I'm not at all a fan of global meditations, and you can ask me another time why not, or global prayer, any of that. It, what you do is have so many conflicting interests and other things going on. It's simply uh, it's a, just a bunch of noise. Now is the time for each and every one of you to go within yourself and ask this simple question, why am I here? And then listen and feel for the answer. Listen, uh, when I say listen, it's not like you're necessarily going to get words, but why am I here? How can I be in my passion right now? And then, and then be quiet and feel it. Take days, take weeks, take months even to feel it. Why am I here? Reconnect with yourself, with what I call the master that's already in. The master that's within you is all the wisdom of all your lifetimes, and it's there. But this human, uh, it, it hasn't been tapped into it. Now is the time, more than any, to tap into that part of yourself. Not into any other angelic being, not even into me, and not into uh, spirit guides or anything like that. Come back to yourself, to that sacred place of you. Don't don't rely right now. Don't go get distracted by anything on the outside because it is all within you. And when you allow that without fear, when you allow that, you reconnect. And that's when you start coming to your realization. And what an amazing opportunity right now amazing. just to listen. There's I mean, never, it's right there. never been a time like this. Don't let this pass. You've got basically through the end of August, uh, each and every one of you, the end of August, and don't wait till August 26th to start listening <laughs> to now. And you've got uh, the, the spring and the summer months ahead of you. It is an ideal time. It's like a gift you gave yourself, but maybe you just don't realize yet it's a gift. It's there. Thank you. So with regard to the film, just jumping forward in time, the film was all about dreaming ourselves awake and manifesting the type of world that we want to live in, a new, re new reality, a new, new now. So what advice do you have for those who are in the process of awakening in the world and for them to dream about creating their utopia. In awakening, it's a very, very personal thing, uh, very personal. Now, I, I've stated that the planet is awakening, but meaning there are many, many individuals on the planet. In your awakening, and again, right now is the ideal time, uh, understand that there are going to be tremendous changes and it's not what you necessarily thought it was. There uh, is a lot of letting go, but there's one important point. Well, several important points, but first of all, don't get distracted. I call it machio. I call it uh, uh, at times spiritual bullshit. Don't get distracted. Always come back to yourself. You already have the answers. There, there's every one of you, you already have the answers. It's in your energy, but you don't believe that the energy is yours. You believe that it's somewhere else. You don't believe that energy serves you, which it does. So come back to that. It's already all there. And now it's just about allowing it. The awakening can be uh, exhilarating at first and extremely challenging later on. You're going to have ups and down cycles as you go uh, through awakening into mastery. Allow those cycles because they're important. It builds a momentum uh, for each and every one of you that will carry you into embodied mastery on the planet. Ultimately, what you're going to face, uh, perhaps the last thing before realization, is a releasing uh, of your guilt 
and shame. It's the biggest uh, human sticking point, guilt and shame. Not just guilt and shame for stealing or lying or things like that. The guilt and shame for having gotten lost here on the planet. The guilt and shame for becoming uh, tied into cycles of uh, lifetimes in the physical body and not being able to get out of it. The guilt and shame of uh, taking so long to resolve uh, the core issues why Earth was created in the first place. You come to a point where it's about letting go of that guilt and shame. That's uh, one of the last things you'll do before realization, and it's the most difficult. If you feel into yourself, you find reasons even to hold on to guilt and shame. And ultimately, in this very, very personal thing of awakening, it's about letting go of that. Once you're clear of the many, many levels, levels that you're not even aware of of guilt and shame, then then you you gracefully go into your realization. But awakening, it's um it's a beautiful thing. It's a very it's a very difficult thing. Ultimately, it's an extremely personal thing. You can't do it in a group. There are groups such as the Crimson Circle who can provide information or more than anything, they just provide stories. And when you hear their stories, you realize that you also can do it. Thank you. Thank you. What, Adamus, what are the practical steps to letting go of guilt and shame? Because I would imagine there's a lot of people sitting there thinking that sounds wonderful, but how do I go about doing that? I, I'm uh, hesitant to answer that uh, in, in a very short session like this, but I'll, I'll give it a try. First of all, the, the human cannot forgive itself. And that's the common mistake is you try to forgive yourself. You simply can't because you don't trust or believe yourself. Ultimately, it's about receiving forgiveness from the I am, what some people would call the soul, from the I am that you are. The I am, the soul, has never judged anything. You've never done anything wrong. It's never wanted you to have a good day nor a bad day. It doesn't really care. But it's receiving that forgiveness. It's like somebody handing you a, a platter uh, of, of goodness, uh, of riches, of wealth of uh, acceptance of love and everything else and typically you would say well yes i'll gladly accept that but well it sounds like a great idea right at first then you instantly uh, the, the human gets overcome with guilt do i really deserve it am i ready for it have i earned it what about other people maybe i should share it with them and then once again you get locked up in this whole issue of guilt and shame there's no easy uh, way to describe it, uh, talking right now, but uh, understand it's receiving it, not from an outside God, not from archangels or anything else. It's about receiving it from your soul, the complete forgiveness for all things, because ultimately you haven't done anything wrong. Hmm. Nothing. What's the importance I'm then? Of the I'm hearing a noise here on this one uh, from your viewers. Uh, a lot of noise, them saying that, well, certainly there are things that are wrong. It isn't murder wrong. Stop thinking like a human. Feel into the I am. Stop finding excuses to justify feeling guilt and shame for things. And it's personal. I'm not saying this is this is a planetary thing. It's a very personal thing, your guilt and shame. Go ahead. Yes. Yes, thank you. Um, so, uh, can you also then talk to us about the uh, almost the the opposite of the importance of the free holding the frequency of joy and fun and laughter in one's body to the point where the only way I can describe it for myself is where every little cell is like a little sun, which came to me recently in a meditation. So you just shine. Just by shining your light, you almost don't have to do anything. But it's no, holding that frequency. Can you talk about that, please? Indeed, and, and I'll refer to what I talk about. Uh, the last thing you do before realization, what's the last thing a person should do before realization is nothing. Uh, in, in other words, uh, the human actually cannot, uh, cannot do realization or enlightenment. Uh, I'll use that term your, your viewers are more familiar with. You, you can't. As a human, you cannot do it. You can study it. You can pretend that you're doing it. You can go through all sorts of disciplines and uh, methods and everything else. 
but you can't. It, it's actually really not human that desires enlightenment. The human actually, given uh, what it's here for, the human is here for experience, to experience life. And it would just keep experiencing and keep going into more and more lifetimes. So the human can't do enlightenment, but the human can allow it. The human can just stop all the mental noise, all the trying to figure things out, all the jibber jabber in the brain. And the human can just take a good couple of deep breaths and allow it. Uh, and that's the most important thing is just allowing. When you do, suddenly you realize every cell in your body is filled with light and joy. You don't have to create it from uh, the, the human mind. Uh, it, it's like, um, I'm not at all a fan of uh, things like affirmations uh, or positive mental thinking. It doesn't work ultimately. It's about allowing and, and oh, I can hear so many people getting upset with me right now and I love it. I love it because we're gonna shake things up a bit. No, the human, the human would continue with its drama. It would continue lifetimes. It would continue experiencing. That is the role of the human in this uh, kind of a trinity of the I am. The, it's the I am the master, which is the wisdom of all the lifetimes and the human. The human is the one that experiences. So uh, basically it's about stopping all the noise that's going on, dear human, and just allow realization enlightenment is a natural process natural and you don't even have i, I just recently did um uh, a, what do they call it a cloud class uh, where they where they filmed uh and it's going to be released soon uh, called pathways to realization you don't have to be spiritual to have enlightenment there are many other pathways uh and one of the pathways is trauma a good trauma can just rocket you right away into enlightenment uh, uh near death is a great way to uh bring you to enlightenment because you suddenly realize the the value of life there's many many different pathways and it's not just spiritual so uh as i've told uh, the crimson circle group you're not a spiritual group uh at all uh, you're you're a group about consciousness fabulous Yes, and did the viewership just drop as I was talking here? <laughs> yeah. No, across across all three <laughs> platforms, we, across all three platforms, we currently have twelve hundred and fifty-seven people watching. So, so that's that hasn't dropped off at all. <laughs> I, can, I can feel a lot of people getting rattled. I, I have to say something I was going to mention at the beginning. Uh, I didn't. So there's somebody that is. Um, uh, I guess they've had some past life experiences with me. They don't like me very much. So they're sending out all, they intentionally came here to send all the dark energy and to shoot it at me and to dear Linda, who's so innocent, and Caldra, who's not as innocent, and to shoot all this negative dark energy. I just have to remind you of something, my dear one who is doing this. Uh, it's like witchcraft uh, and black magic. If you shoot that out at somebody, it's like a big mirror it goes right back on you. So um, don't don't be so naive to be doing that. You're only hurting yourself. And and to uh, the conscious ones, um, hopefully uh, Calder and Linda, uh, I, I call Jeffrey Calder. Um, it's just energy, and it's just energy. They're not going to use it to take it as dark or negative or light. Even uh, it's just energy. So you're really just sending them all sorts of energy so uh, would you please knock it off now thank you everybody out you, you could feel it it was irritating and so good let's move on good moving on Teo, got anything yeah, there's, lo there's lots of questions here i'm just looking um uh, let's ask patty uh, adamas what is the main purpose of this situation uh the coronavirus situation oh yeah. change the planet uh, it's changing the planet. It's economic uh, primarily because the economy on this planet is uh, really what causes it to run. Uh, it, money, the economy is energy. So it's changing, uh, ultimately will change people's understanding of energy. And this is such a good time too for all of you uh, to stop blaming energy imbalances on other things and other people. 
uh, it's it's a great time to uh, stop being upset about big corporations or uh, or any any of that. They're all just a reflection of human consciousness, uh, and they're not out to get you. You are entitled to your own energy. You have it. It's there. Stop blaming it on other things, even blaming it on your, your family, that you're born and raised into a, a poor family or that your uh, spouse uh, took all the money in a divorce or that your business partner, che partner cheated you. Let's knock all that off. Let's get back to the understanding. All energy is yours. And some of you are going to have a really hard time with that. Everything you perceive, everything you see, everything that you're aware of in this moment is your energy. It's not anybody else's. And it's all yours and it's all there to serve you. So let's use this occasion on this planet, unprecedented occasion, to change the perspective. It's your energy. How would you like it to serve you? Stop blaming others. Mm. Nice. There's a question here then that, that feeds on nicely from that about the about the letting go of the of the guilt and the shame. And Sandra says, so um, I feel I could have been a better parent. I've been angry and I've been ungrateful and they're all judgments on myself. Is my role now to simply accept all that I've done without judgment and accept the forgiveness from my soul? That'd be my vote. Absolutely. Well, uh, unless you want to keep going like you're going, uh, and if you if you want to, fine. But it, it's time for for anybody with a degree of consciousness to just stop carrying karma around. Stop going from lifetime to lifetime carrying this burden of guilt and shame. If your soul, your I am, does not judge you for anything, and it doesn't, uh, no way. If your soul doesn't judge you, then why are you judging yourself? It's kind of like a self-inflicted torture. You can get off of it at any time. You can you can stop it at any moment uh, if you choose. But now you're going to go through this whole mental thing saying, well, how do I do that? And what ritual do I use? And how do I get rid of my karma? And what healer and teacher and do I need to go to? No, stop all that. Just take a deep breath and say, I'm done with that. I'm done with that. And now it's time for me to allow my realization. It's, it's that simple. And then go about your life. Uh, don't. It's so easy for the humans to get caught up in what should I be doing? And do I have to pray in a certain way or meditate in a certain way? Do I have to be a vegetarian? None of that. None of that. It's about allowing at the deepest levels of yourself. Thank you. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let's, uh, let's, let's take the most recent question. Sophie says, um, what is your point of view on our educational systems and what do you think is best? Oh, there'll be a lot that's learned uh, about the educational systems through this whole coronavirus. Uh, it would be amazing how the tentacles of uh, all this virus affect so many different areas, but education itself will change uh, that and along with technology. There'll be market changes uh, in these coming years to realize that there are such better ways to teach. The current educational system is um, 175 years old without any real, real changes, and that's going to change. Uh, uh, Self-paced uh, learning, more at-home learning, still going to school at times, but more at-home learning, and the uh, wonderful assistance of technology to really uh, make the student feel comfortable with their own personal way of learning. Mm. And, and they're going to find out, too, just from a, a financial or budget standpoint, that all the overheads of, of the schools, the way they've been doing it, uh, is going to be, a lot of it's going to be unnecessary. Brilliant. There was a question earlier, um, Adonis. Uh, then then uh, humans will stop having so many children because the children will be at home and the parents will have to take care of them. So now we'll have a little bit of uh, uh, quieting in, in the uh, population growth. <laughs> <laughs> there was a question earlier, Adamus, um, which was, um, I think you had said previously that it would be technology that can ultimately help to rebalance this situation, current situation. What did you mean by that? Well, technology is the the most uh, 
well, important, uh, the, the biggest factor in just about anything in the human lives on the planet right now. Uh, it's the overriding factor in everything. Now, the coronavirus, of course, is primarily economic, but uh, in the long run, uh, it's the technology that's the biggest thing that's happening on the planet. So technology is going to change everything, uh, whether it's education, healthcare, uh, whether it's uh, entertainment or anything, uh, artificial intelligence uh, is going to be changing the world. We'll, we'll come to a point of uh, general artificial intelligence uh, in the next few years on the planet, uh, which means that the uh, computer uh, technology will have the capability of a human mind. Uh, then super artificial intelligence uh, in, oh, I would say the next 15 to 20 years which means the computer capability will far exceed the, the human mental capability. We're at a time right now when you're at the very beginning of a whole new species of humans on the planet because of technology and its abilities, uh, whether it's implants or nanotechnology, biotechnology, it's literally going to change the human species. Uh, the fastest that it's ever done, it's a super evolution that's occurring. So uh, in terms of the question about technology, it's going to change every aspect of life. Technology is not a negative thing. Uh, it can be used negatively, of course. It's not a negative thing. But the, the very reason why I'm here working with this group uh, who's in the Crimson Circle right now numbers are not large and nor are we trying to make them large is because this is the time for consciousness to be on the planet to basically balance and to uh to uh, mellow uh the technology that that's uh, advancing so rapidly right now uh, these ones that i work with came here deliberately chose this lifetime this time to be here to be the ones who bring consciousness at the time of technology. Without it, uh, the technology could go awry. It could it could have been the end of the planet Earth because uh, somebody would have figured out a technology that would have basically gobbled up the Earth. But uh, with enough here on the planet uh, who are in consciousness, the technology will actually assist the, the humans and help develop the new species. Sometimes I, I jokingly refer to it as the Robo sapiens. And when you say the new, new, um, the new being, new, newly evolved beings, are you particularly talking about the use here, or the potential for everyone? Uh, of, of technology. Yeah. Oh, uh, for everyone. Uh, technology. The the beautiful thing about technology right now is it becomes uh, cheaper and cheaper, faster and faster. It's uh, a very democratic. Uh, thing that's occurring uh, all over the world. Look at the pol proliferation of uh, smartphones around the world, uh, whether it's a third world country or an advanced country, everybody has about the same capability in the palm of their hands. So it's very democratic. Now it depends on what you're going to do with that technology. Mm. There's a good question that's come in here, Adamus, for it says technology. Um, would it not be better for us as humans to understand the health hazards of the frequencies and the potential human enslavement via technology? Uh, you know, yeah, anytime you have uh, such a potent tool, uh, in this case, technology, uh, it can be used for good, it can be used for bad. And uh, it can be used to for enslavement, uh, but ultimately, what I see is the technology, uh, since most people are, are uh, not of that consciousness, the technology will actually reveal the enslavers rather than uh, encouraging more of them. The technology is going to be used as a light. And, and that's, again, why it's so important for the ones I work with to be here right now to shine that light, because the technology can be a brilliant light for this planet, or uh, it could possibly be a huge darkness, but I do not see it going that way at this time. There's, uh, there, there's too much consciousness on the planet right now. Mm. And on top of that, uh, just to add to it, uh, recently, any alien beings who were interfering with the planet, and, and there have been, uh, they don't fly around in little metal spaceships, but uh, they, they 
were interfering with the planet for quite a long time. Uh, they now can, they can no longer interfere. So there is a lot of tremendous amount of interference, uh, everything from the, from businesses to governments and many people not even aware of these outside uh, interferences from the alien beings. Uh, they are no longer able to interfere with the planet. The good news is that now is that humans are on their own. They have to make their own decision, but now you won't have that alien interference. Can I can I ask you on that question, um, how you see, Adamus, the future with our governments and politicians and the whole way that we vote, and it's just become so oppressive around the world from us being able to be you know, our true sovereign selves. Do you see a time in the future when we will sit maybe like indigenous people more in, in council or it can't continue the way it is? What do you see? Ultimately, uh, government or businesses are a reflection of the consciousness of the planet. As the consciousness changes, you're going to have uh, uh, what I would call much more conscious leaders. Uh, they're going to realize these new leaders are going to realize that uh, that power is an illusion. Power is an old game on the planet, and they simply won't tolerate it. And enough humans will go along with it that that will get out of the uh, the old power modes that the planet has been in for a long, long time. Uh, power is real if you believe in it, but ultimately it's an illusion. It doesn't exist anywhere other than in your mind. Mm. There are going to be so many changes taking place over the next. Uh, decade or, or even much less over the next couple of years as a result of technology and coronavirus. It, it was a perfect convergence, and not an accident, a perfect convergence at uh, the time of consciousness on this planet to have these great changes without, uh, as dear Linda mentioned, without wars, uh, without it being just affecting certain countries. It, it's affecting everyone everywhere it's uh, again this coronavirus in itself is very democratic thank you uh, you, you live uh, all of you live at the greatest time on the planet and i know it's scary uh, if you knew how the the story ended then you wouldn't be so frightened so uh, i'd suggest you all do something uh, and it's very easy to do uh, what you do is you uh, call in your future self and you have your future self. Now, the future self doesn't know all the details nor care about them, but the future self knows that it all works out. Uh, it, it's not, it doesn't, there's not a fate or a destiny that things are, are predetermined. But the future self is already in the future. It knows how beautifully things turn out. And bring that in, not, not for the globe. Uh, please let go of the, trying to save the whole damn planet type of thing. Everybody right now, do it for yourself. Call in the future self, and it will tell you, you will tell yourself how wonderfully it works out. Uh, and then the future self is going to uh, also remind you, don't be in fear. Be in, be in experience, but not in fear. And uh, now is not the time for hiding anymore. Now is the time to come out and be all who you truly are. Thank you. Uh, two more questions. Yes. Thank you. Um, I have one about my mum, so if you want to want ask, I'll do leave that till last. Uh, so. Yes, that could be the third then. Thank okay. you. <laughs> um, the, so there's so many questions coming, it's really hard to keep up, but let's go to a, a recent one. Um, so Adamus, this time into August is a time to be focused within and our own inner journey. And then are you saying that the shifting of the planet is an inside job for each of us working within and focusing on our journey does the work for the future. Yes, uh, this is the, the time right now of of reflection, of, of your inner reflection. It's kind of, um, all of you set it up as this time for the potential to connect with yourself, reconnect. And uh, most of you uh, don't have that real connection uh, with with your with your the master within with the I am. Now is the most beautiful time. The planet is quiet. Uh, you kind of set this up in advance as the perfect opportunity, and that's why I say don't make any big life changing decisions right now. Be open, uh, listen, and allow. 
uh, now is not the time to decide to uh, leave your your partner or to uh, quit a business or a job or anything else like that or to move. Right now is a time of allowing uh, wisdom to come into your life. And wisdom uh, goes far, far beyond uh, intelligence any day. So that's really what you're doing is allowing the wisdom to come in. And just be with it. Don't don't even question how much wisdom has come in or are you doing the wisdomizing correctly? Just take a deep breath and uh, allow, and it's going to be there. Thank you. So let's go to the last question that's come in here from Yolanda. It says, so on the one hand, we sit in and allow ourselves to make space. Yes. Um, and... Sorry, the question disappears up the scroll because it's coming. They're coming in so fast. Here we go. I'll bring it up. So on the one hand, we sit in and allow ourselves to make space for our own purpose here. But if you feel called to stand up against suppression in the very near future, should we stand up? That's a, that's a good question. And now I'm going to address that to the ones I work with uh, in the Crimson Circle or uh, it's not a club or a group, but... In the work we do, no, now is not the time to take up arms, to take up battle. Uh, I've told our group in the past, uh, let all of your causes be gone. All of your causes, the causes, whether it's save the world, save the whales, save the trees, save humanity, it is a huge distraction in these final moments before your realization. Now is all about you. Some of you are going to have a hard time with that because you're planet savers and and it's been uh, or you were energy holders for a long time and you feel so compelled to you have to take up arms and that's what it is and and you justify your causes uh your light workers that's a cause let it go there's no light or dark anyway so what are you fighting you're you're tilting at windmills here for those of you who are truly serious about your embodied realization, and I don't care if you are or you aren't, but if you are coming into your enlightenment in this lifetime, you let go of all those causes. Uh, you stop trying to change everything else, uh, including your own family members. You stop trying to rise up against oppression, all the rest of that, because ultimately, if you do that right now, you're just going to get caught in the noise. You're going to get caught in a battle, the battle of light and dark, can never be won by either side. Ultimately, the greatest thing you can do is allow your, your enlightenment and then just radiate your consciousness to the planet. When you do that, it illuminates the higher potentials that humans cannot see right now. It illuminates them to the ones who are researchers and physicists and scientists and teachers and preachers and everybody else who didn't realize there are so many more potentials. Let them then go do the work to bring those potentials in. You've done your job. You've illuminated potentials. That's it. So in answer to your question, it depends where you are. Uh, if you are truly committed to your enlightenment in this life, lifetime, let go of all causes, all causes. And it, it, you're going to feel selfish at first. You're going to think, oh, I need to be taking other care. No, take care of yourself and yourself alone. It's the greatest thing you can do for the planet is to take care of yourself. If you're still into causes, you still like battles, uh, light against dark, uh, rich against poor, masculine against feminine, go have your fun. But neither side will ever, ever win. Period. Thank you. Such and now, a <laughs> And that's, why, that's why people don't like me because uh, <laughs> it, it's the hardest thing to do is to be within yourself, to be all that you are. It's like, no, I got to go grab my sword and go fight another battle. I have uh, to do you know, something. <laughs> yeah, I have to do something. I have to save the planet. It doesn't actually really get the planet anywhere. And more importantly, there are others in their uh, evolution there are others who will do that job. It's part of their, well, it's part of their evolution. You came from that world where you were the, the cause fighters, you were uh, working against oppression or you were working for the environment. You came from that background, but now it's time for you to really allow yourself. 
And, and if that doesn't sound right, and if uh, if you're upset with it, that's fine. Uh, but that's <laughs> not why this group is here. Well, I'm very happy to hear about the happy ending that's awaiting us. I think a lot of people need that hope. Mm, indeed. Oh, the the, the planet uh, is. Uh, these next uh, these next few years are going to be rough, but the the planet will emerge from this in in a very beautiful way. And 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 the ones who really uh, want to stay in drama and want to stay in in their battles, uh, they'll they'll simply leave the planet, um, or uh, they won't. Uh, it's hard to say this. They'll they'll be operating in a dimen different dimensional reality than others they'll be allowed to you want to continue battles and drama and everything else you're allowed to but uh this planet for the most part is going to move on good thank you, thank you. nikki do you want to say your question? yeah i do i don't i do and i don't really necessarily know what my question is um before just before i came on this call my mother is maybe hours away from um passing she she knows she's passing and wants it to come soon she's 91 had a good innings adamas but she what i've seen over the last week and maybe it's one of the hardest things for us humans to do you've been talking about allowing and how do you you allow your death is it only comes when it's your time can you ask for it and say i'm done okay i'm out of here and does it happen Maybe you could just talk to me a little bit about that. And this is my mum, who I'd love everyone to send very beautiful prayers of just she passes easily. That would be lovely. Yes, um, and and truly, uh, every human has the right to choose uh, their their date and time of their death. Uh, I think it's despicable that people lay in hospital beds for years and years and years. There's no quality of life and. Literally, a lot of the spirit has already gone to the other side. It's just a, a little bit of, um, you could say, spirit flame left in the body and the mind, uh, afraid to let go. Uh, when somebody like your mom is at this stage, you know it's inevitable that she's going to cross over. Uh, it's not like there's a chance yeah. that she's going to come back and have a full life. And the best thing to do is, uh, I, I really discourage praying. It's like black magic, voodoo, uh, and and... You know, I listen to prayers from from the other realms, and they're so sad, and they're so um, they're so they really hold one back, actually. So right now is a time of joyful release, uh, and and saying, "Hey, good life, um, time to go to the other side, and, and time to um, get a little rejuvenation and and uh, relaxation." Uh, for you personally, Nikki, uh, as you've been doing, just guide her. Go to her um, energetically. Go to her and be there with her and say, let's go for a walk. Uh, I'm going to be here with you on this walk. And we'll go to the other realms, which is really much more your home than right here on Earth. And I'll be here with you uh, until you, you find your place, and then I'll return back to my physical body on Earth. So take her for a dream walk, uh, but don't get lost out in the other realms. Uh, and, I, won't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have done a couple of rehearsals with her, taking her up through the tunnel of light and handing her over. And yeah. I said, if it's not happening now, then it's a great rehearsal for when you do go past. And, and it's just for her to know that you're there beside her. Don't, don't drag her into some tunnel and uh, light or anything like that. Just be with her. She'll, you're going to find she's already wandering out there right now. Uh, just go connect with her and just walk with her like you were taking a walk through the park, but not telling her where to go, how fast to go. Just the reassurance that uh, somebody else is there with her is so beautiful. And then at some point, she'll be met by others who are already on the other realms that she knows quite well. And then she'll kind of forget about you for a little while. Fabulous. Yeah. Thank you so much, Adamas. Indeed. Really beautiful to talk to you again. Uh, such a delight to be here with each and every one of you. And I, I, I do hope I have annoyed and provoked and stimulated uh, so many of you. With that, I am Adamas of Sovereign Domain. Uh -huh. So we'll just wait for Jeffrey to come out. That and... Um,
Taya, Nikki, Nikki would, you, would you share the name of your mum? Because I know there's so many people who would like to put up positive thoughts for her, uh, for her easy transition. Just easy transition. Her name is Marion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There's a lot of people asking whether this will be replayed because they've come in late. The answer is yes on the Facebook page, on the Facebook group, on the YouTube channel. You can go to them at any time and you can watch. If you click on the videos tab, they will be available to watch at any time. And I would just like to put up this banner here for Jeffrey and Linda um, so that those of you that are interested to find out more about the uh, the work of Jeffrey, Linda, the, uh, the Crimson Circle, you can go to their website, Crimson Circle. Dot com and they have a Facebook group too as well, which is facebook.com forward slash the crimson circle. And Jeffrey, you and Linda do do monthly uh, talks from Adamus, which are free to watch. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, we do monthly webcasts. Correct. We yeah, the first Saturday of every month, except we always take one month off, but the first Saturday of every month. And, and they're free. Absolutely. And two sessions using some updates to our audience, and then Adamus always with a uh, a new message there to support us on this journey. We have a beautiful studio back in Colorado, uh, really high tech production studio. Uh, we also have a, a little bit smaller version here on the island, uh, uh, but uh, we're, we're going to be doing uh, our next monthly webcast here. I think it's May 2nd, uh, but our production crew isn't here. So we're going to kind of do it like this with a laptop and a kind of a, uh, not, not the big production. And it works. <laughs> it's, it's remarkable. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it really does. So thank, well, I just want to say a huge thank you to you both for, for your support. Um, I've only known you for the last sort of three years, but your support of Nikki and the project over the last you know, 11 years of, you know, and the, and the beautiful gift that you gave us with Tobias is channeling um, for the, the story of, of Time of the Sixth Sun. For those of you that haven't seen Time of the Sixth Sun yet, and you'd like to see it, you're able to do so. You've just got to go to Time of the Six Sun, the, sorry, Time of the Six Sun movie.com, and it's available video on demand for just $4.95. And as Nikki said earlier, you know, this thing has cost us well over £700,000 to make. $4.95 doesn't go a long way to chipping into that. We're nowhere near breaking even. So if you have watched it before and you'd like to support us and you can watch it again, even just for $4.95, that would be wonderful. And when you go to that website as well, there's also the digital access package where there's a whole um 48 minute uh, interview that nikki does with jeffrey about what it's like to be a trans channel which is fantastic that's the eighth episode of our documentary series um of which there are there are eight and uh and the last thing to announce is that is it M monday we've got yeva with us um nikki um uh i think it's lynn franks on monday it's it's oh i can't I'll remember it I'll it we'll last. announce it but we've got we've got <laughs> Next week we have Lynn Franks and we've got the wonderful Ukwala who sat on the uh, sofa with us for sofa chats every single evening. So we're going to be doing one of these okay. next Monday and next Thursday as well. So if you've enjoyed this, please uh, keep an eye on our Facebook page, our Facebook group. And um, is there anything you'd like to say finally, Nikki? Uh, no, just really my thanks to Linda and Jeffrey. And, you know, I'm I'm uh, totally in my heart. I'm Chambra, which is crimson circle family and it's such a beautiful family i've been to i think three or four of your yeah. um annual um gatherings mm -hmm. and um it's incredible work and it's just beautiful to spend time with really like-minded conscious souls so thank you thank you so much for doing this for us Thank and you. I'm, one, I'm one of your fans, Adamus. You can trust me. You never do, but you can. <laughs> and now, is, uh, with all the content you have, uh, the time of the Sixth Sun and the related materials, uh, with everybody sitting at home, uh, what a great time to what watch a beautiful it! Time. Yeah, yeah, great opportunity. Yeah. And I think how great for families to actually sit down with their kids and watch. I mean, Teo's had an experience with his boys, who are what age? Eight and ten? Seven? Yeah, that's be eight and eleven. Yeah. 8 and 11 and they're um you know they love to sit and watch it and i know a lot of families who do so it's what great stuff to give kids yeah well thank you very much thank we uh, enjoyed being here with you Absolutely. i guess it's the new normal we'll just connect you know like yeah. this on our laptops yes <laughs> if you want to just stay on jeffrey but we'll we'll shut it down now thank you Okay. Thank you to every single one of you. At, at peak tonight, there was over 1,250 people watching, which is the most we've ever had on any broadcast we've ever done. So thank you to each and every one of you for giving up your time, and I hope you found this valuable. 
and join us next week on Monday and uh, Thursday evening as well. And with that, we bid you a good night from the United Kingdom, a good morning from the beautiful island of Hawaii, and good day, evening, morning, night, wherever you are watching us in the world. <laughs> Bye-bye for now. Bye. Bye.